Well, good afternoon, everyone, um, and welcome. My name's Simon Evans. I'm the Pro Vice Chancellor International for the University of Melbourne. I'm also a professor in the law school. Uh, it's a great pleasure to um, welcome you all here, but in particular to welcome uh, John Holden, who is the Associate Dean of the Yinqing Academy at Peking University. Uh, John's going to tell you um, more about the Yinqing Academy program uh, and the opportunities for you to uh, consider studying uh, at Peking University in the Yinqing Academy. But I wanted to say one or two words um, about the university's relationship with Peking University as part of the introduction. You may or may not know um, that Peking University is one of China's uh, top universities, uh, one, certainly one of the top two, if not the top university. Um, and it has uh, recognised um, excellence in, in, in practically every discipline, and it's a pioneer uh, in educational reform within China. It's been a partner of this university for a quarter of a century. We have collaborations in many disciplines right across the university. We've had, long, uh, had a long-standing student exchange program uh, with Peking University. So the Yanqing Academy is uh, another part of a broad and deep relationship with Peking, uh, a relationship that the university uh, is very proud of and very um, proud to encourage you to consider Yinqing um, as part of your future. John, as I said, is Associate Dean of Yinqing Academy. Uh, he's a professor of management practice at Guanghua School of Management uh, at Peking University. He's been um, in and around China um, for um, many decades in a variety um, of commercial roles after studying uh, Chinese um, at American universities uh, in the 1970s. He has immense experience in US-China relations uh, and now leads the, um, the recruitment uh, phase of Yinqing Academy and other um, aspects of the program. And great pleasure in introducing uh, John to talk to you and to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Simon. Good day. Was that close? Was that close? Um, I'll, I'll do my best on that. Uh, at uh, lunch, we were talking about uh, the great immense um, fondness I have for Australians. That goes back to 1973 when I was aided by uh, your uh, compatriots uh, in a moment of dire need when I was traveling around Asia. Um, but it's good to be back in Melbourne, and thank you for coming today. So the Yenjing Academy is a new program. It was launched on May 5th last, uh, last year. Simon was there when we first met. It's a program for, it's a center for the study of China. Now what does that mean? It's, just, it's China in the world, past, present, and future. It's China from multiple disciplinary perspectives. Uh, and it is China looked at from within China and from abroad. Uh, in our first manifestation, we are a master's program uh, in China studies, uh, taught in English uh, for bright students from within China and from around the world. Um, we are beginning uh, in September this year with our first cohort of students, of, that is 96 people, 24 from China and 72 from around the world, from 31 different countries. I'll show you exactly where they're from in just a moment. Uh, I'm here because you are a great university and you are bright students and we're looking for the best students from the best universities to, to join us. The program is about 100, it's 96 people the first year. We're expanding it to 130 to 150 next year and up to 200 in years subsequent. The, the program is funded uh, by Chinese entrepreneurs who have donated money to Peking University. And um, from our perspective, it's not only a, a center for, uh, to expose uh, bright young people uh, to the richness of Chinese civilization and the uh, complexity of current issues involving China. Uh, it's, but it's more than that. It's a, it's a, it's a center for the um, catalytic de development of interdisciplinary studies at the university. So we want the humanities and social sciences to talk more to each other 
uh, in addressing issues. In Chinese, we say yi wen ti wei dao xiang. That means to take the, 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 the issue as the guiding uh, principle for your work. As uh, most people in academics um, have experienced, uh, sometimes issues are a little bit masked or disguised because they're viewed from too narrow a disciplinary perspective. You can, if you think about it a little bit, uh, there, is, there is not, there aren't very many issues that we deal with in life that can be narrowly explained by only political science or only economics or only sociology. So this, um, uh, our program is designed to stimulate more interdisciplinary conversations uh, on campus. We also intend for the program to be a center for international dialogue about China and its role in the world, past, present, and future. The program is, is fully funded for every student who is admitted. If you were to receive a fellowship uh, from the Engineering Academy, you would have all expenses paid, tuition, room and board, even your airfare uh, to and from Australia. The program is technically, it's a two-year master's. Um, the first year is devoted to, to coursework, the second to thesis writing. Um, for Chinese students, uh, who by the way, need to, if you're from the PRC, you need to apply through your Chinese university in China. I'll, I'll tell, tell you more about that in a minute. Um, uh, there is a requirement of a second year on campus. International students uh, do not need to stay on campus for their second year. And in fact, if they have a fast agenda and the need to finish within a year and are well organized, they can complete their thesis research and thesis writing uh, within the first year. Um, as I mentioned, the language of instruction is English. However, all international students are required to take Chinese language instruction. Now, if you have none, if you have no basis in Chinese, you'll start from, from base zero. Uh, but we do have students coming in at various levels of Chinese expertise, language expertise. Uh, we offer teaching at all different levels. There's two field studies that are required uh, per year. The first one will be done this November. Uh, all students will be going out to Xi'an. They'll be spending eight days in, in Xi'an learning about Chinese history, um, culture, and other aspects of uh, the economy and life in Xi'an. Now, the master's degree will be a master's in China studies. That's the degree. It's a full master's degree. We offer six different concentrations. So you would choose one of these. Uh, that would affect uh, what type of thesis you were to write, as well as your elective courses and uh, the core courses that you would choose. Not everything under in the world of knowledge is included in those six rubrics. However, um, if it has China in it, we can probably find a way of fitting your interest into one of these concentrations. Uh, think of this program as offering, because we offer such a wide range of study opportunities, think of it as a kind of huge toy box with all different Chinese things in it that you can explore if you were to come to the program. Now, we have um, what we call core courses. In America, we might call them survey courses. They're, they're taught by teams of professors, often from different disciplines, and they range very broadly. And I'll talk about each of these very briefly. Um, the first one, is Chinese history and archaeology up to the unification of China under Shi Huangdi in 220 BC. Um, the second, the development of Chinese civilization takes the story from there down to the 20th century through dynastic history. Obviously, when you're covering such a large uh, swathe of history in, um, in a semester, you're addressing big themes, you're not talking about, you're not, you don't have time to dive down deeply into very small subjects. Uh, but these, are, these courses are taught by outstanding professors with a lot of experience, and there'll be lots of reading and opportunities to learn, uh, and to learn from your fellow students. 
China in transition would be looking at uh, 20th century, but especially China since 1978. Uh, the introduction to China studies is our attempt to show you how we know things about China, from what different angles, uh, what have been the contributions of international scholars, scholarship to the study of China, for example. We've changed the name of the, four, of the uh, fifth uh, program, the course. It's no longer that uses that name. Now we call it Contemporary Chinese Society. So it's trying, it's helping you understand uh, what is happening in the structure of Chinese society today, demographics, etc. Chinese ethics and values is a clear match for the philosophy and religion concentration. And lastly, history of China, Chinese art. Again, looking at art, but also putting it in the context of, of history and other uh, disciplines. So, as I said, everybody has to take Chinese language, um, including the Chinese students who must study a, what would be for them a second foreign language. And then there's one field study per, per semester. This is a list of some of the elective courses that we'll be offering at the academy. These will be taught in English. Um, they're not going to all be offered at the same time. These are in development, um, but it's a wide, it's a wide ranging uh, palette uh, to choose from. Our, our faculty are people, um, some of the best faculty at Peking University. These are people with advanced degrees from international universities or postdocs where they've studied abroad. Um, they're capable of teaching in English. They have seen um, the standards of teaching at the best universities around the world, and we're holding them to those standards. We expect that our courses are, are deeply engaging. They're, they're, they're courses where uh, you have the opportunity to pose questions uh, and to engage deeply with the faculty and with your fellow students. Um, I don't know all of the uh, faculty. I'm relatively new to Peking University, but the people that I do know, uh, I can tell you a little bit about. Um, the first person at Tsai Hongbin, and I think I'm going to change this and put the Chinese name first, the last name first. I don't know why we put it this way. Um, because, as you know, um, people don't say Hongbin Tsai, they say Tsai Hongbin. He's a PhD in economics from Stanford, um, dean of the uh, Guanghua School of Business. He's an, also an associate dean of our program. He's a very good friend, delightful guy, very interesting economist also happens to be a member of the National People's Congress, and he's very, very plugged in and um, a terrific teacher. Um, Fu Jun, executive dean of the School of Government, is an old friend of mine. I've known him for uh, well over a dozen years. He's a PhD in, uh, from the Harvard Kennedy School. Very interesting thinker, very engaging, wide-ranging um, uh, analyst of uh, government issues. Uh, Jia Qinghua is a very senior um, Chinese foreign policy expert. He's the Dean of the International of School of International Relations, great guy. Um, Jin Li is, um, teaches at the Business School, but also at Oxford, at Said. Uh, very interesting, dynamic guy. Uh, Lu Yang, Department of History, uh, BA from Beida, Masters from the University of Vienna, PhD from Princeton. Um, a terrific scholar and a very engaging teacher. These are just a few people. Um, they teach in other departments and schools um, are seconded to us. Um, we have money available to hire additional new faculty and we are recruiting. So if any of your professors want to move to Beijing, don't tell Simon because he'll be very unhappy with me, um, but you can let them know. Uh, Chinese students will have to, um, our students can take courses uh, in other schools and departments at Beida, uh, provided they meet the requirements. Uh, there are some courses that are taught in English, School of International Relations, for example, um, but others do as well. Uh, but if your Chinese is extremely good and you want to challenge yourself and take a course with Chinese being the language of instruction, 
that is also possible. And by the same token, Beida students can take our courses, provided we have room for them. I mentioned this about the, um, the fellowship. It's quite generous. Um, it covers the first year, and for those who stay, stay on for a second year, or for part of a second year, we have money available to fund um, their stay, either through a teaching assistantship or through a research assistantship. So that's, um, there's full funding for two years. Uh, for mainland Chinese students, uh, during the second year, they will have opportunities to, to go on exchange programs uh, to campuses abroad. One of the things I want to, want to emphasize about this program <clears throat> uh, is that it's very much integrated in, into life at Peking University. The campus is in the Jingyuan, which is at the center of, 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 of Beida. Uh, dormitory is right around the corner. It's in Shaoyuan, next to all, a lot of the other Chinese dormitories. Students, our students will be uh, sharing cafeterias around the campus with their Chinese friends and, and Tongxue. Uh, by the way, the food, if you haven't been to Beida cafeterias, is, is unusually good. And it's, there's an enormous variety. I have been, uh, I'll, never, I'll never forget, I was at Hebrew University last fall, and uh, one of the professors who'd been a student at Beida, um, we, were, we were meeting just a little bit before lunch, and he said, hmm, I'm getting hungry, it just reminds me of the great food you have at Beida, much better than the cafeterias at Hebrew University. And I, I wouldn't dare to say that it's better than Melbourne, um, but I can tell you it's quite good. And it's, and it's very healthy and safe. But um, so we encourage our students to, um, to join other campus clubs, uh, the pre-existing campus clubs. I think some of our students already are talking about forming their own clubs, <clears throat> and these will be inclusive, obviously. We, uh, for those students who have the time, and inclination, uh, we can facilitate internships op opportunities for you. Um, and job placement is something that I'm responsible for. Uh, whether it's, um, whether you have an interest in working in China after you finish your degree in a Chinese company, an international company, possibly even in government, or working in an international organization in New York or Geneva, uh, we have a lot of uh, connections at Beida that we can use, mobilize to help students. Uh, we intend to use our, our platform to bring in great guest speakers. Everywhere I go, I, uh, and I, I have a chance to meet uh, professors or interesting business people or other thinkers, I, I'm sure to um, invite them to come, either for a big public program or a small fireside chat in our dormitory. Uh, academic flexibility, what do I mean by that? Um, because there's a thesis requirement, <coughs> um, it it's, it's provides an opportunity for students to really dig in to a particular subject that they're interested in and to then bring in resources to help them pursue that interest. Lastly, the networking. Given the quality of the students that we're recruiting, um, you'll have an almost instantaneous global network of really interesting friends. So the first uh, class of 72 international students comes from 31 countries. Um, we have two from Australia. Um, one is a student at Oxford. The other is a student at the University of Sydney. Um, and next year, how many will we have from Melbourne, Simon? Uh, we'll knock out the Sydney, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll knock, out, knock them out of the box, and uh, I, don't know about, uh, I don't know about Oxford. But um, uh, it's very diverse, and um, it's designed to be diverse. We, it's roughly, we, have, we don't have absolute quotas, and we are recruiting at, uh, from more countries going forward, but uh, figure roughly a quarter North America, a quarter Europe, a quarter from China, and a quarter from the rest of the world. I've just come, this trip for me has been the U.S. East Coast, um, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, New Zealand, Australia. I'm back to Beijing tomorrow night. Um, and these are the universities. Uh, there's well over 40 
that the students come from, the ones on the left in green, have multiple um, representatives. Um, since this was our first year, uh, we, there was a premium placed on making sure we had name brand universities. Therefore, you see um, quite a number from multiple students from Harvard, Oxford, Cape Town, Princeton, Stanford, etc. Um, but I think that's going to even out. I, I can't imagine any university having as many as five in years to come. Okay. Now, what kind of a student are we looking for? Uh, I think you know the kind of student who is the bright, who's unusually bright, who is unusually motivated. Is um, you have a sense that they're going someplace, that they're a natural leader among, among their friends, um, excellent academic performance shows a clear interest in what happens in the world and making a contribution to the world. Um, but also very importantly, um, our students are people who, for whom this program is really going to make a difference in their life. Right? It's going to as a transformative potential for transformative function. And it could be, it could be very, uh, quite, quite varied. I'll give you a few examples of students. We have a a young woman from Swaziland who has a master's in civil engineering from Cape Town. She doesn't know much about China. She doesn't, hasn't studied the language, but she knows that China has developed its infrastructure very quickly, wants to see how that was done, bring that knowledge back home uh, to be influential in policymaking in her country. Uh, she's very motivated. Um, she'll learn a huge amount. And for us, offering her this fellowship is a way to really make a difference in her life and in her country. Um, we have, let me think, think of a couple of other um, examples. Um, a German student uh, from <coughs> KU Leuven who's finishing his master's in European studies, very familiar with um, international relations, but never had a chance to really focus on China. He knows it's important and for his role Going forward as a policymaker, as an academic, uh, it's going to be it's going to be important. We have a young woman from Princeton who is extremely good in Chinese, including classical Chinese, has translated part of the Shangshu into English already. And for her, this is a chance to explore more widely in subjects that she hasn't studied. For example, economics, international relations, other things having to do with China. Uh, before she probably goes on to become a, uh, a very serious sinologist. But you see it's a, it's a wide-ranging uh, list of, of um, majors. Uh, let me see, who else? But a lot of people, the, the, there's one, another woman from uh, Princeton, for example, she's interested and in, she studied Chinese performing arts she wants to be an impresario or an impresaria, someone who um, brings arts uh, groups to the United States from China and, and vice versa. That's her dream. Chinese students um, all come from, they come from 12 different universities, Beida being the, uh, having the largest group. Um, and the way that things are set up today is that um, students, the, if you have a, a Chinese passport, the only way to come in is through a, your Chinese undergraduate program. At the moment, and this may change in the future, the moment uh, if you are a PRC national uh, from um, the mainland, uh, this is, that's how you have to come through into the program. Um, but that's where they're from, and these are the majors I don't know why that's jumped, skipped a line there. Anyway, um, this is what the Chinese students have studied as undergrads. Here they are. Um, I don't know them all yet. I haven't met everybody. Um, well, as you see, they are all very handsome and very beautiful people in addition to being very smart. And so. Um, 
That's a very engaging bunch of people. Um, and they have been talking to each other now since they were admitted into the program uh, back in February and March. They're all talking on Facebook. Uh, they're all setting up VPNs so that they can continue to use Facebook and other tools once they get into China at our encouragement. Um, I just described the kind of person we're looking for. I think it's really important that um, there's, the student has a, in their application letter a statement of purpose that they articulate clearly what this is going to do for them. And it shows, and, and they, they, you should show that you've actually done the research to understand the program. Uh, so uh, applications are due at the end of January uh, for this next um, intake, which would be starting in September of 2016. Um, your university, we will uh, will work out a way for you to apply here on campus um, to a to a sent to Robert uh, Westring's uh, office, um, where there will be a review process, and the best um, the best applications would then be forwarded to us in a type of nomination or endorsement process. As I mentioned earlier, <coughs> if you are from, <coughs> a student is from the, the mainland, um, there is that the avenue for application is through a Chinese university. Unfortunately, uh, that, is, um, a, what, that is the case at the moment. There's an age, not strict limit, uh, but we uh, prefer it if people are under the age of 26 when they begin the program. There's an automatic extension if there has been national service, military or Peace Corps type of service. Um, but we will consider people who are older than 26 um, on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, information about the program is available on our website. Um, and uh, you can see it's Yenqing Academy. Yenqing, as you may know, is the name of a university that was in the location uh, where Beidai is now. Um, in fact, our buildings are in the Jingyuan. Four of those buildings were original Yenqing University buildings. So we have a, we're paying tribute, in a sense, to that um, international institution uh, on the Beidai campus. So the application is quite simple. Two letters of recommendation. Uh, there's an application form to fill out. If you've been studying here, you do not need to prove that you can um, speak, or re speak, read, and write English. You don't need that. Uh, we need a CV that tells us a little bit about you, your background um, and the uh, personal statement that I mentioned earlier. Lastly, um, your university will come up with a, <clears throat> some sort of an endorsement. In, uh, trans in presenting the uh, applications to us. So that's the um, rough outline of the program. Uh, I'd like to con sort of conclude by mentioning that um, be because of its interdisciplinary nature um, and its importance, um, th this program actually is, um, has a lot of potential to develop uh, we intend to in, um, introduce as many as 10 different research centers at the Engineering Academy. Um, we hope eventually to get the hard sciences involved in some of our con interdisciplinary conversations. And, um, and the ped pedagogical standards that we're setting for our courses, we're pretty confident will be used as a model by uh, at Peking University. So this, is, this program is really part of the strategic plan for the future of the university. It's something that um, we're very excited about. Um, we we're so excited that we decided not to, not to wait the customary two or three years and just to punch ahead and do it as fast as we, as we could, which, is, um, which has surprised a lot of people um, who didn't think it was possible to create such a program. In, in such a short time, but it, uh, it has been a, a lot of fun and we found that the interest around the world um, among great students is, uh, is really quite extraordinary. And the fact that you don't have to have mastered Chinese before you come uh, is, a, is a big advantage, plus of course the fact that 
um, the fellowship is generous and it doesn't cost you anything. That's a major advantage. Um, we do have people with, with great Chinese, but, um, and some with very good Chinese, but for whom taking classes at, uh, at a normal Chinese univer university in, in Chinese would still be quite difficult. Um, I don't know how I would do. I've been studying Chinese for a long time. Um, but I don't read Chinese nearly as quickly as I read English, so it would be a challenge for me as well. So that's the program. I'm hoping that we'll have some great applicants from, from Melbourne. Uh, Australia is, a, is an important country to, um, to, uh, to China, and the, the education system here is fantastic. So uh, we're looking forward to increasing the numbers of Australian students from the current two to, well, it'll be less than 100. I don't know what the ultimate number is going to be. That'll depend really on you. <laughs>